Hello friends, welcome back to Scientific Blunders, where you learn the don'ts first. So, we are going to be continuing our series on gravitation today. And this is the problem we have. Find the pressure at the center of the earth. Okay. And this is a problem that's adapted from IITG 2015. Although I believe in the exam, the question was to find the pressure, um, not only at the center, but as a function of R. So at different points inside the earth. But today we're just going to consider one special case of that. So finding the pressure just at the center. Okay. And we can assume we're given, you know, the universal constants, the mass of the earth, uh, the universal gravitational constant and the radius of the earth. So let me scroll down and we can get started. Okay. So we need to find the pressure in the center of the earth, correct? And let's recall the definition of pressure. So pressure is force per unit area, correct? So if someone, let's say there's a tiny observer, very tiny observer standing at the center of the earth, what is the force they would experience per unit area? That is the pressure, correct? So let's think about the force first. Okay, and then maybe we can think about the area. So what is the force experienced by this person who is standing at the center of the earth? For that, let's recall another interesting concept that we all have learned. And that is, how does acceleration due to gravity vary inside the earth? Right, so inside and outside. So this is R and this is G as a function of R. Okay. And why are we even interested in calculating G? Because force is nothing but um, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We can divide that by area. And you know, generally when we say G, we are talking about G on the surface of the earth or near the surface of the earth. But in this context, I'm referring to G at any point um, as a function of R. And just to be clear, R is, you know, R is defined as the distance from the center. So when R equals capital R, now this capital R, we are on the surface. When R is less than that, we are inside. And when R is greater than that, we are outside. Okay. So how does, how does acceleration due, gra due to gravity vary as a function of R? And so many of you might remember that it, interestingly, it varies linearly inside the earth until you reach the surface of the earth. Okay. And from there on, it starts dropping, you know, one by R squared. And so what is, and this is, you know, this is when we say R equals capital R, we are on the surface of the earth. So that's what it means. Okay. So what is the value of acceleration on the surface? Well, it's the very famous, very well-known value of 9.8 meter per second squared. And, you know, in terms of these constants, that would be gm by r squared and that is of course you know the number that we all are familiar with if you substitute these constants this is the number you would get so this is how acceleration due to gravity varies inside the earth and what is this point here you know this was r equals capital r so that's on the surface what is r equal to zero well r equal to zero is nothing but where this person is standing and so that is the center of the earth correct and so G takes the value zero at the center of the earth because it varies linearly. It increases linearly up to GM by R squared and then it starts dropping. Okay. So at the center of the earth, G is zero. So the entire numerator is zero and it doesn't matter what the area is. Right. So the pressure at the center, pressure at the center, let's call that PC equals zero. So I encourage you all to pause for a second and think whether what we did is correct. So assuming you have paused the video and you're back after thinking a lot about this, you know, this number, you know, whatever we did seems correct, but somehow intuitively I feel, you know, this person who's standing at the center, they are going to be pushed down on all sides, right? The, the earth, you know, this massive earth, is of huge mass and huge radius is going to really be pushing down on this person 
uh, right? And so even though the net force is zero, the net force is definitely zero. Does that actually mean that the pressure is zero as well? So this is, you know, an interesting thing to think about. And what I generally do, um, my personal preference, you know, in this kind of confusing situations is to find the pressure at any given radius, oh, sorry, any, yes, any given radius R, and then we can substitute R equals zero. So we solve for the general case and then we substitute the specific case that we want. And that in my experience is, you know, that has turned out to be like a more foolproof method to solve these kinds of problems. Okay. So, you know, let's not get too confident about this number, but um, let's try to solve for the pressure at any point R and then we'll substitute R equals zero and see what we get. If it matches, great. If not, uh, we'll think about that. Okay. So we'll scroll down a little bit more or actually, yeah, I would need a little more space. Yeah. Okay. And let's create our little diagram of the earth one more time. Okay. And now, you know, like I said, we want to consider, you know, a general point R. So let's consider, you know, a particular, you know, very, you know, the typical, you know, the, you know, as you might expect, acceleration due to gra gravity varies inside the earth, right? So you might need to use tools from calculus to solve this. And, you know, the typical element we use when we, you know, deal with these spheres. Wow, that was funny. The typical element that we use is, um, you know, this kind of a, this elemental sphere kind of a thing, something like that. Okay. So let's consider an elemental sphere, you know, at a distance r. Okay. And, you know, this is a very tiny element. So it has thickness. I don't know if you can even see it, but the thickness we'll assume is dr. Okay. And the, what is the area of this element? Well, the area of the element is 4 pi r squared. Okay. I think I will be needing all of the space here. So I'm going to start writing here. Okay. And let's analyze the free body diagram of this element alone. Okay. This tiny element that we saw here. So to do that, I always like to isolate it first uh, from the rest. So this is the free body diagram that we want to analyze, or this is the element that we want to analyze. So since we want to find pressure as a function of radius, you know, let's assume some general values of pressure. So let's say the pressure of P is acting on the inside. Okay. And if the pressure is P, remember the free body diagram only contains forces. So we cannot write pressures in the free body diagram. So if the pressure on the inside is P, the force corresponding force would be P A. Okay. And this is, you know, I'm assuming it's like acting outward in all directions. I definitely need to change this color just to you know, add some flavor to what we are drawing here. Okay. So the pressure on the, or the pressure on the inside is P. So the force on the inside is P A. Let's assume that, you know, you know, because this is a very tiny element, the pressure may have changed a little bit on the outside. So let's assume it has increased by dp. So the new pressure is p plus dp and the new force would just be p plus dp into a. So because this element is so tiny, we can assume it has the same area basically. Okay. So on the outside, the force acting is p plus dp into a and on the inside, this is the force on the outside and on the inside, the force is p a. Okay. And are these the only forces on this element? Well, we forgot one more very important uh, force and that comes from the acceleration due to gravity, right? So what is the force on this tiny spherical element due to the rest of the earth? Well, that is just going to be, you know, that DF and we'll mention the direction in a second. So df will nothing be or uh, will be nothing but the mass of the element, which is a tiny dm, 
times the acceleration due to gravity at that point r okay and what is the acceleration due to gravity at any point um any general point r so well this is a straight line right and you know it passes through the origin so it has to have the form y equals mx so if you solve for a general value of r you would end up with gmr by r cube okay when you substitute r equals 0 you get 0 when you substitute r equals capital r you get this number okay so this makes sense right so the the force on this element due to the rest of the earth is dm into g and g takes this value so let's substitute that dm into gmr by r cube okay okay as i feared we do not have enough space so let's scroll down a little bit maybe let's have this diagram here okay now in which direction is this force going to act okay so gravitation you know in electrostatics you know two like charges will repel each other unlike charges will attract but in gravitation masses always attract each other correct so this mass is going to be pulled to the center of the earth okay with a force df so this this df is actually going to be an attractive force that is going to pull pull this you know this element that we are considering to the center of the earth okay so that is going to be df okay and now we just do a simple force balance you know simple you know net force equals zero equation okay let me change my color one more time yeah this is a nice color so let's say you know just just to maintain some convention all inward forces are positive and outward forces are negative so what are the inward forces So the inward forces are P plus dP into A. It's acting inward, right? And dF is also an inward force. And what are the outward forces? P A. So the convention is inwards is positive, so these are positive. Outwards is negative. Minus P A equals zero because this whole thing is in equilibrium. We are assuming the entire Earth is in equilibrium. So every anything you consider on the Earth should have a net force of zero. Okay. so pa cancels with pa so you end up with let's scroll down some some more so you end up with let me continue here so you end up with dp into a plus df equals 0 okay so dp into a uh yes dp into a plus what was df df was dm okay let's simplify this a little bit dm is nothing but density so mass is density times volume so dm is nothing but density and we assume the earth is uniformly dense okay it has the same density everywhere and that is an important assumption which is I don't think that is true you know in in reality the earth is not uniformly dense because we know there is a crust which is the outer layer there is a there is a mantle and then there is a core so clearly there are you know there's three distinct layers so I'm pretty sure this is not a you know very practical assumption but you know we have to simplify problems to be the, to be able to solve them by hand so we'll assume that the earth has uniform density everywhere so this dm is going to be rho times dv okay let me actually not skip all of the steps so we'll go step by step and then you have the rest of this okay gmr by r cube that's equal to 0 okay so df i just wrote this term here in a little slightly different format and what is dv dv is nothing but um a times dr correct because dr is the thickness of this element and a is the surface area of the element so the surface area of the element times the thickness of the element should give us the volume okay and now we essentially a and a is non zero so we can divide both sides by a to cancel a so we end up with the equation dp 
equals minus rho g m r dr by r cube perfect this is a you know this is a differential equation and it's pretty straightforward and all we have to do and from here on it is just mathematics except for one step so at the, so we integrate you know at r equals 0 what is the pressure well we want to find that pressure let's call that pc and at r equals r which means you are on the on the surface of the earth what is the pressure on the surface of the earth well it's going to be zero right because there is nothing pushing down um there's nothing you know really compressing or pushing down when you're on the surface of the earth as you go inside yes you're being compressed from all directions but on the surface of the earth you're not being compressed that way so the pressure is zero and of course we are ignoring atmospheric pressure here and and i think that's a fair assumption because you know the pressure if there is any pressure at the center of the earth i'm sure it's going to be much much higher okay than the atmospheric pressure so for all practical purposes atmospheric pressure is zero and now when you just evaluate this integral okay from here on it's just mathematics so uh, i don't think we have to you know work through the details of this you end up with 3 gm squared by 8 pi r to the 4 and remember here we are also assuming we substitute for the density to be equal to the mass of the earth by the volume of the earth okay and we assume that the density of the earth is same everywhere and that you know it's a maybe not a very good assumption to model the real world but good enough for our purposes and let me just box wow this is interesting let me just box our equation don't know why this is doing that okay okay let me box this equation yes okay and if you were to substitute this it turns out you will get something around 170.8 giga pascals so that's into 10 power 9 that's a giga right a mega is 10 power 6 a giga is 10 power 9 pascals okay and this is huge okay this is compared to you know the atmospheric pressure on the surface of the earth so the atmospheric pressure is 10 power 5 pascals and we are talking about something that's four uh, that's six times a million times higher than the pressure we experience on the surface okay so this is really huge pressures and you know we are we are done solving this problem but what exactly you know this this is go back to where we started what's wrong with this you know so let's let's try to understand what went wrong because the pressure is the force by area correct that's the definition of pressure which we used here so the definition is not wrong so this is correct and the force is mass times gravity and gravity is zero at the center so the force is also zero but because the pressure is force by area and the force is zero does that mean that the pressure is also zero and now i think this is the most important part of this whole exercise we need to understand so let me tell you one thing first this is the right answer for pressure okay the pressure is not zero at the center of the earth in fact it is the opposite of zero it's actually very high and we actually you know if you substitute these numbers you'll get a huge number compared to what we experience here on the surface of the earth but we need to understand what went wrong here right because the pressure is force by area force is zero but that doesn't mean there's zero pressure why okay i really encourage you to pause the video here and think about this and i think this is a very very important uh, lesson not just for gravitation but even for chapters like you know fluid mechanics or um, you know elasticity young's modulus you know stress and strain those kinds of topics i think this is a very very important learning so i encourage you to pause the video here Think about you know why zero force does not imply zero pressure okay so assuming you have thought about this let's 
So and this is how I like to think about it. Okay, so this may not be the most formal engineering, you know, the mathematically correct or you know the most formal definition you will learn in engineering, but pressure is force by area. Okay, I agree with that. Pressure is force by area, but it is the force per unit area as the area gets smaller and smaller. This is how I like to think about it. Okay, so what do I mean by this? So you know, so let's say we are let's draw, let me draw the center of the earth, or let me draw the earth again. Uh, okay, so let's say there's you know a tiny oops. Okay, let's say there's a tiny particle at the center of the earth. Okay, now if the definition of pressure were just the net force by area, we know that the pressure would be zero. If that was the definition of pressure. Okay, because the net force on this particle is zero, because the acceleration due to gravity at this point is zero. But that is not the definition of pressure. The definition of pressure is force per unit area as the area gets smaller and smaller. So if we were to draw the free body diagram of this particle, you know it is going to be compressed from all directions, correct? So it's going to experience this. So the net force is zero, but the pressure at this point is not the net force. Divided by the area, it is the force per unit area as the area gets smaller. So what do I mean by that? Let's now let's zoom in. Let's say you want to. Okay, let me get rid of some of these arrows. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Let me just draw the. Um, so let's zoom in on just we are zooming in on this particle. Okay, this circle here is this particle. We actually want to find the force on this as the force per unit area as the area tends to zero. So that that means we are considering like a small subset, you know, like a small section here, and we are finding the force per unit area on this section. Okay. So now we zoomed in from here to here. Now we want to zoom in from here to just this this section. Okay. So this section is going to look something like this. And remember, the entire Earth is in equilibrium, right? So that means even this section is going to be under equilibrium. And so it is going to experience some compressive force from the outside, but because it's in equilibrium, you know, it's going to experience the same force from the inside as well. Okay. And let's call this area A. And obviously, these are dFs and dAs because these are very small. But we can just call them F and A. Now. The definition of pressure at this point is the force per unit area as the area tends to zero. So in this particular case, um, what the force per unit area is. So the area is also really small. The force is also really small. We want the ratio of those. So that is the definition of pressure. And obviously that is not zero, right? Because there is going to be some force acting here. And this, it is going to be counterbalance. So we are not looking at the net force on this. We are just looking at the magnitude of the compressive force. Okay, not the net force because the net force is still going to be zero by Newton's laws. Okay, we are only looking at the magnitude of the compressive force as the area gets smaller and smaller. Okay, so I hope this clarifies things a little bit. So just to summarize, you know, we tried to find the pressure at the center of the Earth. We thought about it as the net force per unit area, but the net force was zero, so we thought the pressure was zero, and then we did all of these calculations, all of this integration and everything, to arrive at a very different number from zero. In fact, a very huge number. Now we have some intuition about why, um, you know, even though the net force is zero at the center of the Earth, the pressure is not zero because the pressure has a slightly different definition. It is not just the net force per unit area, but it's actually the force per unit area as the area gets smaller and smaller. Okay, and so to summarize, I hope I hope this video was useful. And the same thing is true not just for gravitation, okay? Because you know, let's say there's you know in in somehow the shapes get messed up every time. Okay, maybe I don't need to be perfect, but let's say there's a you know beaker filled with water. And we want to find the pressure at this point, okay? And let's say the atmospheric pressure is P naught plus rho g h. 
so if we use our same logic that net force implies net force being zero implies net pressure is or pressure is zero this entire thing is you know in hydrostatic equilibrium that means this particle here this fluid particle is also in equilibrium so the net force there is zero but does that mean the net the pressure is also zero no right because we usually write the pressure as you know p not atmospheric pressure plus rho g h okay and so obviously the pressure there is not zero because that particle is going to be in equilibrium but it's going to experience forces in all directions so we are going to look at the force per unit area as the area gets smaller and smaller okay and so this concept that we learn today i think it's really really important and this will have applications you know in gravitation electrostatics fluid mechanics and so many other areas and so before i uh, before i wrap up i just want to say net force or zero net force does not imply zero pressure okay and that is the biggest lesson that we have learned today so with that i hope you all found this video useful and i will see you in the next video bye